So the calm after the storm is here, and as we all feared, Eamond now sits on the throne as King Consort. So let's let's get into that, and do be sure you stay tuned until the end of this video, because we're going to do a preview for the next episode, episode 6, that comes next week. I've got the trailer loaded up, and we're going to do a reaction and kind of see if we can find some Easter eggs to that. So do watch until the end to see what we can get from that trailer. But talking about episode 5 specifically, a lot of things happened. Lots of moving pieces. We're back to the actual Game of Thrones. I have to say, the thing that stuck out to me inherently in this episode, before we get on to that big grand setup at the end, which was great... Um, the thing that really, really, really stuck out to me was Joceris making promises he, I don't think he can keep. Making a deal with the phrase, as <laughs> watching Westerosi shows has shown us, is a bad idea that usually results in weddings tinged with that ever little bit of red. Bad move. And the fact that he's promised the phrase Harrenhal, which is what his uncle his uncle, his father, I can't, th it's so mixed up now, but it's what Damon is trying to get for himself, that's going to come back and bite them in the ass. And speaking of Damon, well, the machinations of his mind have been revealed in this episode, haven't I? Because he's made it very clear, he doesn't want to be called your grace or my prince, he now fully wants to be called my king. And when they even try and take it a step back and say my king consort, nah, let's drop that part. It's, it was fascinating to see everything at play in this episode. Damon clearly showing which direction he's going down and, you know, the fact that, yeah, he's still open to having Rhaenyra by his side, but he's back to thinking he's the rightful heir after, but in, in a post-Viserys world. Alison, for her part, has lost all control now. That, that little control she had in the wake of Otto Hightower going leaving rather that the little control she had remaining which was the you know the control she had over Aegon and the fact that Aegon did really value her opinion which that in itself kept her in power yeah Aegon's kind of a piece of gi a giant piece of Kentucky fried chicken right now uh so that's not going anywhere whether he makes it out of this season or not I don't know um I have a feeling Aemond might have something to say about that but, ooh, yeah, it's the, the things are not going well in Westeros. You've got Sir Kristen Cole, who's now Sir Bitch Boy, as I've dubbed him. He He's having all sorts of regret now, isn't he? Like, uh, yeah, he, he he's seen just how far Eamond is prepared to go. And he's scared. The fact that he doesn't actually want to reveal what happened to Alicent speaks volumes of the power that Eamond has in this world. It is It is a scary prospect that we're going to be seeing him as king for the next few episodes. Rhaenyra's picked a hand. We're going to see if that plays out. And then the episode ends with... <laughs> I mean, sorry, before we get on to the episode ending, one of the overarching themes of this episode, which I thought was actually really, really interesting, was how to wage war without the physical violence and act of war. At least not obvious well-known physical violence because Eamon kind of not Eamon sorry Damon kind of went down a little bit of a guerrilla warfare route with the Brackens didn't he like and that backfired too so has he now got an army has he not everything seems to be falling apart for everyone other than Eamon and that is a scary thought man because where I've seen some comparisons online comparing Aegon to Joffrey from the old Game of Thrones which I think is a silly comparison Aemon comparing him to Joffrey I can see that I can see um he I mean he's the best character in the whole show but it he's a scary character man like we don't want to be in a world where Aemon is where Aemon is uh in control but that seems to be the world we find ourselves in and you very much get the impression that the people of King's Landing are not seeing that dragon slaying at Rook's Rest as a good thing. They see it as an ill omen. And the whole episode is kind of putting those little... Putting those little... It's foreshadowing. It's putting the little breadcrumbs there. Don't be surprised if the people of King's Landing have a bigger part to play in the, in the unfolding in this series. That's my prediction right now. Um, 
And yeah, let's let's talk about that ending then. Because it ends with the cliffhanger of Joceris coming back. Renera finally opening up to him. Finally speaking to him on the level. Like a human. Not just as a mother, but as an adult. And expressing her disdain at not being allowed to fight. About not being allowed to push forward. About being almost shackled in her own castle. Because everything depends on her. And they have the brilliant idea... Well, not even so much idea. Following this myth, this long lost story of, well, we've got lots of lineage and we still have two more dragons sans riders. Maybe we find some riders for those dragons. I, um, I mean, it, it, I think the season is going to end with them having new dragon riders. But in order to get there, we're going to see some dragon riding attempts go very, very, very wrong. That's 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 my guess. Um, but yeah, ther I can't remember what the, the Therma, Therma something and then and then Storm Rider. Yeah, those are we. So we have two more dragons, which we all forgot about. And uh, I wonder who the riders are going to be. I think. John Allen, what, what's his face? Uh, Abubakar Salim. The actor, the the character Abubakar Salim plays. I reckon he's going to be one of the riders. Um, who the other one is, I don't know. A few episodes back, there was that guy in the tavern in King's Landing who was saying that he was a Targaryen, a long lost Targaryen, and they were also toying with the blacksmith in this episode. Maybe he's Targaryen as well because he had that blonde hair, didn't he? Maybe not. Maybe we're going to see a lot of people attempting to ride dragons, and it's all going to go very wrong. That's what I think is going to happen, as I've already said. But it really, really created some intrigue. So, once again, a superb episode of House of the Dragon. What did you all think of it? Now, normally I would do some shilling and plugging. But as promised, if you've stayed this far, let's check out what next week's... Let's check out what next week's episode is going to look like. Here's the trailer. It's never been attempted before. It's never been attempted before, to so that's, that's the dragon riding we were just talking about. To die. Perhaps the gods will favor us. If Damon prevails in the Riverlands, I no longer have the numbers to challenge him. My uncle Trying is a challenge I welcome. If you My uncle is a challenge I would welcome. So he's still in Harren Hall here. He's going off somewhere. He's got the backpack on his back. He's got his dragon in the background ready to rock and roll. Where's he going? Where's Damon going? Where's Damon going? Let's face me. You have the arrogance of youth. Okay, this is cool. Aemon and Aegon reunited again. My guess here, the way he's kind of looking down on him menacingly. This isn't a brother, are you okay? That I think this is a brother. If you say anything, I will end you. So this is a threat scene going on here. That's my guess. Have the indignities of your childhood not yet sufficiently been avenged? You must see me a ruler and the symbols of authority. The shield and the sword. Where's she flying to? Okay, have a look at the shields. Hands of gold are always cold. A lion still has claws. This is the Lannister army. Now, we've had baby Lannister sitting in King's Landing for a while now playing with the marbles. I think we're now going to see his army. Yep, that's a Lannister army, that. Never match the strength of the green armies. We need Daemon. I must now proceed as if I stand alone. It is my fault that you have forgotten to fear me. Okay, I think that was another dream scene. Okay, so you remember I said earlier that we're gonna that the people of King's Landing are gonna go, gonna play a part. So we got a riot going on here. Maybe Helena, actually Helena, right here. Maybe she's one of the people who becomes one of the dragon riders. Maybe this riot is what pushes her over the edge to abandon King's Landing and to abandon Alicent and that side of, and that side of the family and move over to the other, and she becomes a dragon rider. Who knows? Should be stated, I haven't seen the book. I haven't read the books, so I'm guessing here. Oh, and I'm guessing that's Storm Rider. And that face, that face to me looks like a face of shock. So I'm gonna guess that she's witnessing an attempted dragon riding go very, very wrong here. Let's see if I'm right next week. Is there anything wrong? It's killer TV, isn't it? That is the lot. So, what did you think of this episode? What did you think of my predictions for next episode? 
Leave your thoughts in your comments below. There's a subscribe button there. Another video for you to watch up there. Enough shilling for now. Thank you as always for watching. Keep it right here on the Silver Screen Dudes. And I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye for now.